This is Women Road Warriors with Shelly Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you drive long haul, short haul, or heavy haul, they're here to empower and inspire women in the trades on TNCRadio.live. So gear down, sit back, and enjoy. You're listening to Women Road Warriors with host Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro, where we work to inspire and empower women in trucking, in the trades, and everywhere. I'm Shelley, and I'm Kathy. And today we have the wonderful honor of speaking with a true trailblazer and road warrior, Myra Lisa Yo-Yo Worley who was a wildcat long haul trucker who started driving in 1973. She made national headlines and was featured by the national show Real People when she beat the odds on favorite driver named Special K at the Atlanta International Speedway in a bobtail truck race doing 110 miles per hour in her tricked out Peterbilt. She was the only lady in the race and she won. Oh my goodness. Yo-Yo, we are so excited to speak with you. You really paved the way for so many women at a time when there really weren't that many women drivers. You're a true legend, and, and I'd say true to your name, which means rides with the wind, from what I understand. Yes, that's what it means, riding with the wind. Th- did that inspire you? I you... my great-grandma. You had a sign on your Peterbilt that said, I'm the only hell my mama ever raised. I love it. D- did your mom agree with that? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Uh, uh, like I told Kim at 10 Magazine, I First thing Mama said to come out of my mouth was switch way to the Peterbilt Builders. <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, I had to ask, which way do I go to get to the chrome shop? There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's right. So did you always want to be a driver? I never even thought about being a driver until Jim and his wife. Jim was sick. He had the flu. And his wife, and they talked me into going with him to Georgia, living up there by Knoxville. So I could talk to Jim and help him stay awake. He felt so bad. He was running them peaches out of Georgia up to Hunts Point and coming back empty. They were paying so good. But anyway, I took off with him. We got down the other side of Atlanta, and he pulled the throttle out. Of course, this is a cab over Peter built a little three and a quarter in it. He pulled the throttle out and jumped in the bed now and said, Girl, if you don't get behind the wheel, they're going to be one of the darndest wrecks you ever seen. So I climbed over the doghouse and got behind the wheel. Whoa. And had you driven a semi before? No, I drove uh, six wheelers, a uh, cow to all horses around, and a uh, tractor, of course. But as far as driving a semi truck, no. That's what I'm saying. He just pulled the throttle out, well, which would be now the cruise control. Okay. And jumped in the sleeper. Oh, my How goodness. You? So I had to climb over the talk house and get behind the wheel, and they were going to be one of the darndest tracks you ever seen. Oh, jeez. So how old were you when that, when that, when you started that? Uh, we won't go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the second Good enough trip, for me. <laughs> we got up to Hunts Point, got unloaded, and to come back and got up on the other side of Atlanta again, and there's a rest area down there. And I was it, I was letting him drive because I was tired. I done drove from Knoxville to Atlanta. That just wore me out three hours, and I was tired. But anyway, we got down there, coming up on the rest area, and this pickup truck pulling this camper was one of them snowbirds on its way to Florida for the winter. That sucker come right over on us. And the only thing I could holler was, Jim, hold it, Jim, hold it. Well, he had to cut to the left, and when he cut to the left there, we went, ended up in the meeting strip, and it looked like a snake going down through her, oh, no. just whipping us back and forth. But you know that when it was all done and said that he drove us out of that meeting strip? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Jim was a good driver now. He really, I mean, he taught me a lot. Uh, well, he's passed away now, but it's all good things about him. Wow. So were you afraid? He's just a nice I bet, I bet that was, that was an A-ticket ride, and whoa. No, because I knew Jim would, hold, would keep it under control. Yeah. That's how much faith I had in the man. So was he basically the one who trained you after that and, and went through all of the stuff oh, you yeah. needed to know? Okay. Yep. Sure did. Taught me how to, well, out of fact, the third trip down through there, I was driving on the other side of Atlanta again. And I was probably running 75 or 80, and I think back then the speed limit was 75, and I met a cop. 
and I was watching him out of my rearview mirror. I see him hit his brake lights. I said, oh, darn, that sucker's going to turn around. But he couldn't find anywhere to get across the media strip. <laughs> <laughs> so I got off at Macon, Georgia. That's where we was loading at. And I was kind of like coasted up to the stop sign. I set the brakes. Jim, it's your turn, because I didn't know the gears. I said, Jim, wake up, wake up, it's your turn. So I made him get up and drive us on to where we was loading. So it didn't make you nervous that you didn't know all the gears and you were doing this uh, driving on the freeway? Wow. Nah, it didn't bother me one bit. Uh, girl, I'm an old country girl. You know, driving a tractor or something, it didn't bother me. So you were a natural? More or less. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I was supposed to be. So when you were driving, how many women were actually in the industry at the time when you first started? Not that many. I mean, there was some that was running with their better half. But as far as driving, they wasn't that many. Then when you did see one, she looked like she needed to take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't go there either. <laughs> well, you were a sharp looker. And I, I, I was always particular about what I wore. My blue jeans oh, were yeah. always was always had an arch in them like they'd been ironed. My boots was always polished. Because every chance I got to stop at a truck stop and get my boots polished, I done it. You were a sharp-looking lady. I, I saw some of the video from real people and everything. My goodness, you definitely had some style. Right. So in some of the video that I saw, it, it looked like you were just super calm and nothing really phased you. It didn't. I mean, I got to the point that I didn't even use a clutch. Okay. Wow. So the only time I would use a clutch if I was coming to a stop sign or taking off. But other yeah. than that, I used clutch. Sure. Slip the clutch. And then I learned how to drive a six and a four, and that was a lot of fun. I hung that sucker up three times going to New Jersey. No, going to Boston. But after I climbed up under it and I hung that sucker, I quit hanging it up. I learned how to shift that mama. Fun too. When you had both them sticks against the bass, you was moving on. Did you run into any kind of adversity at all, being a woman? I, I would imagine you probably ran into some guys that had attitudes. Oh, yeah, a few. Well, you ought to be at home raising a baby. You ought to be at home cooking. What are you doing out here? I just tuned them out. I couldn't be bothered. You just, just ignored them, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I run with the WBOs, Wild Bunch Outlaws. <laughs> and we all knowed each other. And if one of us was broke down on the side of the road, God, there'd be five trucks there. And if you was going eastbound, the eastbound would even stop and walk across the media strip and see what was wrong with your truck. Yeah. If you had a fuel filter going bad, or if you had a, a leak in your airlines or whatever. But there'd be a whole crew on the west side and the east side. Somebody would have the something that you need. Sure. You know, one of us would be carrying something. One of the drivers would have the parts or whatever you needed. Uh huh. I imagine that driving was a, maybe a lot more fun. It was. It was more like the Wild West. It didn't have all the regulations they have today. That's for sure. Oh, that's true. Definitely is. Now these days, you know, if you break down, you get on that darn cell phone. Right. Instead of a CB. Uh, and that's why nobody will stop because they think that you have a cell phone and you've got everything under cover. But you still need to holler at them on the CB and ask them if they're okay and if they need help. Makes sense. Oh, that's common sense. I mean, you know. So what did you like the most? You drove reefer for 20 years. Was that what you started with? Or was it dry box? Yeah, or? I reefed for 20 years and okay. then went to a van for 10 years. And then I got a flatbed for 10 years. And yeah. I'm going to say the one that I, I really enjoyed was the flatbed. Because yeah. anybody can open their doors up and back up to a dock. And not everybody can load the flatbed and get it legal, let alone get out there, strap it down, and talk it. Oh, yeah. So I like I like the flatbed. I like the challenge. Well, my ex uh, was a long-haul truck driver. I was with him for about four years, and I would travel the road with him. And that was my first introduction to truck driving. And he, he ran flatbed, and so I would have to, you know, do the tarp thing with him. And I remember one time in Vancouver, we were down at the docks and it was raining and he had to go do something. And he left me there to, to, to tie it, to tie the strap, to tie it down. And when he came back, yeah. I had four guys helping me. One was crawled up on top. They were all doing the job for me. And he says, well, how did you know? Yeah, and, and I said, well, you're just not cute enough. What can I say? Right. <laughs> He taught me how to drive too um, a few times, and that's how that's when I first realized, like, hey, I can do this. But when I when I got into trucking, it was a different kind of trucking. I it was I had no idea um, 
that it'd be a lot different. And my idea when, when the opportunity came up um, to be a truck driver, that's what I that's what I was thinking I was going to do is do the long haul trucking, not realizing that uh, I had signed up for uh, heavy haul trucking. <laughs> a completely different story. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I appreciate all that you do because I, I've, I've done it a few times and uh, those flat decks, they're, they're hard. That's a lot of work, like a lot of work. Oh, a flat bed? Yeah. 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 So I would have mentioned nah, it wasn't to me. No? Because, oh, for the very simple reason, whenever I was pulling the produce, a lot of times I would load in Amarillo, Texas, a load of frozen meat uh-huh. at the slaughterhouse and take it to California. When I got out there to California, this load was loaded on big pallets and I would have to break it down and put it on small pallets or hire somebody to do it. But I done it. That way I could get the exercise. Wow. I broke go. every bit of it down and hollered at them. Come on, come get it. They'd come get that skin, bring me another pallet. I'd do one. Come get it. Wow. I stayed in shape place for the flatbed. It, it didn't bother me because I was already in shape, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That requires a bit of upper body strength, doesn't it, to properly tarp a load and all of that and tie it down oh yeah oh yeah and it takes common sense too <laughs> there's not a lot of common you can't sense buy that. <laughs> uh, women have probably more common sense than than men in many cases don't you think i'm not saying nothing <laughs> <laughs> hey, too many ex-drivers on my road here this road is like well, maybe a mile and a half long uh-huh. they seven house on this road Retired truck drivers on my road. Oh, how cool. So you were a wildcat driver. What is that? For those who may not know what, what the heck that is. Uh, actually, it's kind of like running illegal. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, like uh, maybe overweight. Okay. May have two or three long books. Mm-hmm. And it's all kind of little things, you know. Okay. Thing, things were years ago were a little bit different. Uh, drivers kind of had a little bit more latitude, and well, it was more like the Wild West. You probably felt like the, some of the last of the cowboys, right? Exactly. Yo, yo, you're loved by so many people. Even Blackberry Smoke, the band, dedicated a song to you called "Hey Delilah." They say they absolutely adore you, and they mention you anytime they can. They just got through having a concert down here in Memphis. Oh, that's really cool. I didn't even know it. He won. They won the 60 miles away. And then my sister told me that whenever they were doing the concert and singing my song that they wrote, they actually had a big screen up and was showing the real people there. Yep. Or who they were singing about. They have that on the internet. The song Hey Delilah that they dedicated to you. I had them on my afternoon show, the Truckers Network radio show on TNC Radio Live, and they said they just absolutely love you. <laughs>
what inspired you to race at the Atlanta International Speedway? That that takes some because guts. Because I was old and I'm not mentioning no names, but I didn't have no business driving a truck, let alone racing one. And buddy, when they said that, I said, you look out, sucker. Uh, here <laughs> Challenge <come>. accepted. <laughs> Excellent. And I beat, I beat his butt, too. You certainly inspired the curiosity of the media. Real people from NBC even came out to film you. That was terrific. It's called Transport City, here on the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia. May I have your attention, please? Charlie Brown meets Second Son and Silver Streak in the driver's lounge. Trucker heaven, where the language is CB. My handle is Special K. I got my diesel wound up and she's a running like I never before. My handle is Carolina Flash. Head to speed on, I give it all right. The wolf man. Well, I don't see a cop in sight. The lemon squeeze. Six days on the route, I said I'm gonna make it home tonight. Truckers who jockey these big rigs like to boast they're modern cowboys. The last of the free spirits. Loners who prefer the freedom of the open road. Oh, they're outspoken and opinionated and proud of it. May I have your attention, please? Yo-Yo, would you please come to the control center? Yo-Yo. This was the lady we'd come to meet. Handle, Yo-Yo, 125 pounds of down-home Tennessee woman. I'm a truck driving mother. I drive from California to Maine. Clearly, Yo-Yo knew how to do a lot more than pack a pair of size 7 denims. So I asked her to show me around her office. Is this a gas tank? Fuel tank. Fuel tank. We don't say gas. Well, that's what it runs is fuel. It's a diesel engine. Why does it have to be chrome, or is that just decoration? Don't you think it looks better chrome? I think so. Well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> is this your home? Yeah. Step on up. OK. This is great. Yo-Yo, could we do just one thing? Hey, I was that? Oh. Could you show me how to start this thing? You got the keys, don't you? <laughs> I hope so. Well, all you do? You put the key in. Well, I'm OK so far. There we go. You want to check, make sure it's in neutral. Uh-huh. No gear. OK. All you do is have your key over and push this button right here. Don't give and it no, yeah, don't, you don't give it no fuel at all. Just push it. That's it? Yeah, it's very simple. Okay, so this is the clutch here, uh -huh. right? Slow down on your gas. Let your clutch out until you can feel it catch. We're moving! Yo-Yo, <laughs> I think I better leave the driving to you. Okay. Let her rip, sweetheart. I'll, I'll let you have it all for yourself. <laughs> some of us were made for this, and some of us weren't. I'm a truck driving mother. I drive from California to Maine. This sets me free. I just get up there and drive. I just got it in my blood from my daddy. My daddy was a trucker. He never done nothing for us. He abandoned Mama with four of us. I'll call him whenever I'm in Detroit, Michigan. That's where he lives at. And we'll talk and I told him if I was, had been driving a truck for a little over two years. He, he didn't believe me. I tried to convince him, and he still didn't believe me. Another thing Daddy probably wouldn't believe is that Yo-Yo was on her way to a race. Here, the odds-on favorite to win would be a trucker from Raccoon Mountain, Alabama. Everybody knew his handle, Special K. Was Yo-Yo worried? Sorry, but at this time, be sure and to keep it out this way. Check a flag, the race is over. The man may think he's a movie star, but he's just another trucker. Right, I'll try to remember that. <laughs> and they're off. Ten of the biggest, baddest trucks around in a trial heat for the first ever Get Down and Burn Rubber Bobtail Truck Race. You look nice in that truck, Jet. You got your hammer down. Break a breaker. Roger, big K. It may be a big cut, but it doesn't look that fast to me. Hey, I'm telling you what. You better not say us this old boy. You're out on the big track now, bro. Get into the other lane so I can come around you. I'm not allowed to pass this lane. Come on back here now. You're not supposed to pass this big truck, girl. Stack to stack at 110 miles an hour. 
It looks like Yo-Yo won this heat. And she could give Special K even more heat. The day of the big race. I get, you know, my truck, and it just seems to fit me. Just what I like to do. That audio you just heard is from an episode of Real People, which aired on NBC TV. It was produced by George Schlatter. That race was truly amazing, and so was Yo-Yo. She beat the odds-on favorite and showed up all the men. What a trailblazer. Oh, my goodness, Yo-Yo. You've done so much for women. Our hats are off to you. So you started out working for a company and you became an owner-operator, am I correct? Oh, yeah. Come an owner-operator in 78. That's when I got that Peterbilt Christmas Eve. Wow, five years into driving. I had to make driving. a decision. I was a date this guy named, I won't say his name, and he asked me to marry him, and I accepted the ring. But we had a Christmas party. Of course, we was all drinking. And we went to bed. I was laying there looking at the ring. Then I got to thinking about that red Peterbilt. Looking at the ring, red Peterbilt. Looking at the ring, red Peterbilt. I got up, I took that ring off, and laid it on the, the table beside the bed. I grabbed my suitcase and run, got my car and, and went to Fisca, Alabama. Of course, I called him first and told him, I want that truck. I'm on my way. Wow. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is awesome. I mean, yeah, no. I'll, I'll take the truck over the ring. <laughs> there you go. That's exactly what I've done. Kill <laughs> that, that ride. Here for a magazine, she just died laughing. She said, you didn't. I said, yeah, I did. Yeah, I had to yeah. make a decision. The ring was a Peterbilt. Peterbilt won. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it would run 127 with a load behind it. Ooh, you, you brought it up to that speed to I know that, right? was just 110 right? around that round track because I didn't want to get get so faster. Right. just want to go fast enough for I leave everybody behind me. Well, Sure. They could eat your dust, but you weren't going to take any risks, right? <laughs> That's right. Uh-huh. And I let, I had a, a split leveler on that truck, uh, air leveler, one for the left side, one for the right side. And whenever I started running that truck around that track, trying to get used to it, my truck was really, really leaning inwards. And I got a little nervous there, but when I got over there, we got, was lining enough to race, I got to hanging. Why do I not let some of the air out of the right side so whenever I go around them curves, I won't be tipping so bad mm -hmm. like I was going to turn over? That's what I done. I let some of the air out and blocked that air line off where it wouldn't feed air to them air bikes, and it set up pretty good then going around them curves. Of course, then they was 20, bank 22 degrees, and they redone it here recently, and I think it's 44 degrees now. So you were the first lady to win that race, weren't you? Yeah. Well, actually, it was it was a heat. Right. It wasn't an official race. It was more or less, if you want to run your truck, get out here, but you got to be able to hook something underneath your trailer when you get out of here and go down the road. Now, they got roll bars, and they got the fifth wheels welded down and all this other stuff. Sure. I mean, they could, no way in the world they can leave that racetrack and go haul a load. The ones that had the big mouth, you know, tells me that you ain't got no business raising that truck. Come on, buddy. I'll show you what kind of business I got. Good for you. Yeah, no kidding. You showed him. That's awesome. what I was thinking. I never said anything like that. You know, I didn't want to make anybody mad or anything like that, but that's what I was thinking. And he was eating crow and didn't want to admit it either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on that, on that Smokey and the Bandit number two there, he's the one that hit the wall. Oh. Special K okay. is. He okay. had a blowout and smacked that wall big time. Okay. In the movie. People really, really think the world of you. You've done so many things, and real people made you kind of an international hit. You, you uh, were on the NASCAR circuit. What all happened after that, uh, that race? It just made you kind of a household name. Well, they built uh, Jerry Reed a truck, an international aerodyne. It even has a pad inside it that's especially made for Jerry Reed. Mm -hmm. And they caught me into driving that thing around to all the NASCAR races and okay. handed out brochures on the truck races. So I've done that for the season. They wasn't a NASCAR race that I missed, buddy. I was there at all of them. And I, I no. still watch them now. Paul Larson won Sunday, which tickled the snot out of me because I like him. He's a good driver. I understand nice. even recording studios were calling, and you got an offer uh, for a TV show, wasn't it? 
Well, they, my mother told me this, that he haw, had called and wanted me to come on the show and sing that song that I wrote, which I could, I didn't, I didn't like that song then, and I don't like it now. <laughs> For the very simple reason, we practiced that song slow. But then again, when I got in that recording studio, they had a few drinks, and they started picking it real fast. So I was trying to stay up with them for singing that song. But anyway, and then she told me that uh, somebody called and wanted to make yo-yo blue jeans. And whenever that call come in, I said, well, time to move. So I've been hid for 30 years. Nobody knows where I was at until my daughter and Micah has out, a Boston Outlaw truckers teamed up on me. Well, they wanted to honor yeah, she, you. Yeah. My do- I was out outside and outside smoking a cigarette. My daughter comes up there, Mama, how would you like to drive a Peter again? I said, I would love to be able to drive again, Michelle. And she come back out there in 15 minutes. She says, you remember John from On Time Trucking? I said, well, yeah. Well, he's going to have his truck over at the Air Base Sunday and going to let you drive it. We'll take you for a ride and do whatever you want to do. I said, okay, that's cool. And I figured it'd be a couple trucks. Girl got over there and they was... 30 semi-trucks. They were 30, at least 30 motorcycles. TV channel from Memphis was there. TV channel from Jackson, Tennessee was there. Uh, State Gazette out of Dyersburg was there. And I said, God, all I wanted to do was drive a truck. <laughs> well, it is. It's an honor for us to talk to you. You you are a, a champion for women. You really are. You were doing stuff that a lot of ladies weren't doing back in the 70s. Oh, yeah, well, that part I know, yeah. Like even for for me up here in, in my job, I I've been doing this for eight years, and when I got hired up here, um, I was only the third woman up here, and that was in 2013. So I mean, really, I can't even imagine what you were doing, you know, in the 80s and all that. Like, wow, you deserve an award, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, like I said, I've been here for 30 years until it come out last year where I was at. Yeah. I just wanted to be, I just wanted to drive my truck, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah. You got a big mouth, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, around it at me, thinking you're going to pass me if I get it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the attitude. Absolutely. It's like, um, I will not be defeated, right? Well, by, not by no a, man anyway. There you go. There you go. <laughs> the, we have a thing up here with, for operating equipment that they say um, that women make better operators simply because, number one, we care more. And number two, we don't drive it like we stole it. That we, we tend to keep the maintenance more up than, than, than not. And we actually have, uh, we make better uh, operators because we're more detailed um, oriented than than some men so and it's pretty cool to see some of these women that are uh, uh, operating the big shovels that we have i mean yeah it makes me proud to be a woman it really does i just i just love my job still like even on my crew right now there's 140 and there's only about 12 women there's still not a whole lot so oh heck i was just telling shelly before the show that i'm going down to peru uh to meet caterpillar down there for some other stuff that i'm doing and they're bringing me to a mine where it's 100% women run so which I think is phenomenal and you that don't is. hear about that yeah. anywhere so mm. I'm going to be taking lots of pictures oh of you back. don't uh, no you don't I've not heard of it yeah I know 100% women run down in Peru so I know I'm going in November so I'll, I'll I, I got to see that with my own eyes <laughs> That's awesome. Yo-Yo, did you ever get discouraged and ever have any doubts because you were probably getting, hey, you know, the little lady can't do this? No, because I just tuned them out. I mean, you you could cuss me like a dog, but I'd still tune you out. There you go. That might make them better. Yeah, it's all a matter of attitude and perspective. And if you let the the naysayers bother you, you'll never get anywhere because Mm -hmm. they're going to be everywhere. Right. And and your value does not decrease based on somebody else's inability to see how awesome you are. Right. So like whatever. Yeah. I like to I, I like to drive on my windows down where the wind is hitting me in the face. And what I would do, I, I would drive barefooted. The right foot on the throttle, of course. The left foot, I have it up on the dash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my feet are all the way down to the floor. You can tell who was a cool driver back then. If they had their there feet you go. Always, <laughs> and you just seen their eyeballs when you went by them. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Great. I used to pull in truck stop. Anybody want to buy blue jeans? What kind you got? I got Levi's. Oh, what size are they? Any size that you all want, I got them. I don't know how much you want for them. $5 a piece. And there's nothing wrong with them, though. There ain't nothing wrong with them. They just got the zipper in the back. Then they get to cuss at me. <laughs> I like that. So oh, I used to do all kind of crap like that. Eat one time at the truck stop, and I watched these two drivers out of Alabama, which I know them. They dropped their trailers and went around back there to the shop. And some guy was on the radio, you make honey, Mary Jane. You make honey, Mary Jane. And I said, I'll fix your butt. I hauled it to I do go down 15. So we went down 15. You got some? I said, yeah, I'll just give it to you. If you go around there in the corner there where you walk into the restaurant and hook under my, my trailer and bring it around here to me, I'm around here at the shop. Okay, I can do that. Well, I was hid in my sleeper. My mic, my micro cord, it was so long that I couldn't sit in my sleeper and talk on it. So nobody could see me. Well, this sucker come over there and was hooking up to that trailer. And about that time, here come them two drivers. I thought they was going to whoop him but, <laughs> for, for their load. But he told them what was going on. And the next thing I know, they looked down my way and pointed. They seen my hoods. And they know then what had happened. They know that that driver had been had by me. <laughs> so they had to watch out for you. That's great. Oh, yeah. I was, I was mischievous. I bet they loved it, and I bet that that gave uh, a lot of respect. The guys are, you know, kind of like, you know, she's got spunk. <laughs> it's probably what they would have said, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll pull in trucks off. Does anybody know me? Yeah, I know you. You owe me twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Have you ever been in a oh, bad man, accident? In a what? In an accident at all? I mean, often, like, I don't know about, like, uh, I live by the Rocky Mountains, and I travel often to Vancouver, and. Uh, many times we'll see some of these trucks in the ditch or they'll, they'll miss the curb or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, that, that TV show Highway Through Hell is filmed up here where I live. So I was just wondering if you were ever in an accident at all. No, uh, not with me driving, but I was in an accident. I was in the sleeper and we come up out of the valley. I had a barrel drums with orange juice on. And his mama talked me into going with him because she knew that he'd been up for a while and leave my truck there, and she'd put it in the shop, and somebody else would deliver my load. I said, okay. So we got up there. I, well, I put his tail to bed first, and got up there about 60 miles from Corvette, Canada. And I asked him, hey, are you okay to drive now? He said, yeah, I'm fine. I said, okay. So he got underneath the wheel, and I put my jogging britches on and my T-shirt on, and I went to bed. The next thing I know, I was mouthing off the walls and had to climb out the sleeper door on us on our side. He wow. went to sleep. The mm. road went right. He went straight right in that. It took two cranes to lift that truck up out of that media strip. Wow. Wow. They're laying on it. And that orange juice went everywhere. I, I bet. Yeah. Uh, his mama finally put a old girl on there that had CDLs so that whatever he got stopped or got involved in a wreck or something, she'd jump behind the steering wheel, take the blame, or she can keep insurance on the truck. What advice do you have, Yo-Yo, for women who are going into the industry? Because they're really, I think there's only still about 10% of the industry are lady drivers. Uh, I wouldn't know what to tell them except get her done. You know, if that's what you want to do, get it done. Don't let anything stand in your way, basically? Exactly. I okay. I think I'm going to use that on the radio tonight, get her done. <laughs> yeah, it's a great phrase. It really is. You hear it a lot yeah. in Texas, and yeah, absolutely. Not so much here in Canada. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna use that on the radio tonight. Yeah. It works. <laughs> so is that pretty much your motto there, Yo Yo? Get her done. Yeah. Get her done. Yep. So that reflects in all aspects of your life, I bet. Right? Just get her done. Just do it. Right. That's right. Get her done. I mean, you know, if you don't like what you're doing, quit. You'll get away from it. But if you love it like I did, which Janice, who I was talking to her and her husband yesterday, I talked to him today, too. But she's like me. She she loves to drive. So they're in hog heaven, but they're stuck in the Volvo White, an automatic. She mm -hmm. said, Lisa, she said, I got to hang up to 80 miles an hour going downhill. I said, well, just think if you had a sifter, you could put it in Georgia Overdrive, put it in neutral. Then you go really go down that hill. Yeah, I read that you like to laughing. go fast when you could. Oh, yeah. 
me and Randy was, I don't know where he loaded at, but we met up. He was from the house. We met up, which he's passed away now. We met up up at Bloomsbury because we planned it, so we'd run back to the house together. But we was coming down through our gall. We was running 90 or 100, through Virginia. We was running 90 or 100 miles an hour coming down through there, and it was dark. I mean, it was one of them dark, dark nights. The moon wasn't out there. And Randy was, was just on the verge of getting by me. And then I seen his brake lights come on. He said, look out, there's a car there. And I looked out, and there was a car in front of me. It didn't have no brake lights. Didn't have no tail lights, didn't have uh. nothing. And that was me go to the left and hit Randy, or me go to the right and hit that shoulder. I hit that shoulder running a hundred mile an hour past that car going down oh. going down eighty one over there in Virginia. Wow. But I I passed him. I got by that car, I caught his tail and I passed him. I said, Come on, buddy. You wow. get to buy supper. Wow. That's amazing. And you kept it under control. That's that's uh I mean, the car could have swerved just a little bit and had us all in time. Oh, but that man. car was just as straight. He must have had a CB in there. That car was just as straight and smooth as it could be. I mean, it was unbelievable. It was like it was planned. You had the good Lord watching over you on that one, too, I bet. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And I remember one time me and Randy, well, we run a lot together because well, he was a daddy, too. We was coming down through Virginia, and he said, let's stop down here and get us a turkey. I said, okay. And it was just about Thanksgiving, so we pulled off on the shoulder where we knowed all these turkeys was at. We climbed this chain and fence and got over in that field. About that time, the head gobbler let out a warning. Them suckers like to flog those to death before we can get back over that chain and fence. Oh, jeez. We sighted in. We didn't want to sell nobody's turkeys, which we didn't know if there was anybody's uh, they could have been just wild turkeys, you know. Right. But, you know, they'll, they'll attack you just like a geese will. Oh, sure. A geese is one of the best watchdogs you could have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My grandmother turkeys the to, same way. My grandmother raised turkeys, so and they, they can be pretty flighty when they want to be. <laughs> That's right. Well, them did. Like I said, that head guy there let out that warning, and by God, here they all come. Uh, had their wings, had their arm, well, their feathers out like they're sick from the fly. I mean, just, I never will forget that. I, I never will forget us laughing so hard, too, trying to get over that fence. Randy was cool, though. He stopped up there on, on the turnpike one time because he had to go take a leak. And mm-hmm. he was on the uh, well, he was on the plate behind the sleeper, tinkling, tinkling right there. About that time, a Jersey cop come down through there. And got over in the grass and come up there beside him. And the officer had his window down. And mm-hmm. Randy was peeing. Well, you know what happened to the cop. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, he peed all over him. <laughs> That's funny. I, I bet the officer yeah, was well, not amused. <laughs> yeah, and then another time, Randy got pulled over. Of course, his daddy was with him, Ted. And Ted was in a sleeper. And the officer, or DOT, matter of fact. And Randy was logging his daddy while he was legal. And the officer says, well, you got somebody with you? Yeah, I got my daddy with me, Ted. Oh, where's he at? I don't see him in that seat. Oh, he's in the bed. Well, I've got to look back there and see if he's back there. Well, that officer thought he'd be smart and pulled them curtains apart and looked at Ted back there. And Ted had him a dildo that he bumped the tires with. He had his pants unzipped and had that dildo there. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I'm talking about this deal, though, was probably at least 16 inches long. Mm. And that that officer just closed the curtains up and got down out of the truck. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sounds like you guys had a lot of fun. We did. We had them all. Uh-huh. Cutting up and having a good people. time. So were there any other women uh, that uh, in the 40 years you drove that started driving that uh, you could pal around with or? Well, they was Linda. She ended up marrying Jim, the one that taught me how to drive. Uh-huh. We run a lot together. Whenever you see me, you'd see her and then one of the other trucks. They'd be three of us always running together. Okay. Nice. Oh, yeah. We had all kind of fun back then. Back then, when you seen one of us, of course, we were least the clone. You seen all three of us, but the other ones wasn't far away. So everybody's like, uh-oh, here they come, right? That's right. 
Mm-hmm. Where's the other thing? Look out. <laughs> right. So, Look behind you. I'm a bit curious. How, how when you, when you had, you mentioned you had your daughter, how did that work for trucking? Did you take time off work or what? Like, do you have any, any other children or how did that I, work? I drove up to where I was like six months pregnant. I mean, I went down the road with a gallon Ziploc bag between my legs throwing up. I mean, I was sick all nine months. But wow. after I, yeah, but I went over there to church. I knew they had a daycare, and I, whenever I found out I was pregnant, I went ahead and signed her up for this daycare at church. And I, I knew that I had to do that for the very simple reason. They were had so many children that once one of them got out of there, they'd have a room. So anyway, the room come available for Michelle. So I put her in daycare. I'd have her at daycare at 6 in the morning, go get on the clock, run local for like eight hours, and then take off and go to St. Louis, get me a load of beer, then come back. By that time, it's like 12 or 1. I'd walk next door and get Michelle. She'd be at Mama's, and I'd take her home, and then I'd get up in the morning at 5 o'clock and fix her lunch for her at, for daycare, and then I'd go back and get on the clock again. But she went with me when she got a little older. Okay. Mama, are we there yet? No, oh, we're not there yet. <laughs> then one time she took her a cardboard and wrote, help me on it, mm-hmm. and big letters. And whenever I'd be passing somebody, she'd hold that cardboard up where they could see it. I told her, I said, Michelle, you better quit doing it. I said, you'll get the law after me thinking I've kidnapped your tail. Yeah, no right. kidding. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. I stopped over and got like, deep detailed over at North of Oklahoma City. And I was, we pulled out of there, and I was sitting there, and I kept seeing something out of the corner of my eye. What the heck was that? Then a few minutes later, I seen it again. I said, well, there must be a fly in here. Then I seen it again. Then this time I turned around and looked. She was sitting back there with a straw, and she was making her some spit wads in her mouth, and she was shooting them spit wads at me. <laughs> Going up the road, I said, girl, you know, I said, when we stop, I said, you're going to clean this mess up. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> She sounds like like her mother, like uh-huh. a little yeah. uh, wildcat. <laughs> exactly. Just anything to aggravate you. <laughs> That's funny. I like her already. Yeah. <laughs> Got some spunk. <laughs> yes, she does. Absolutely. Uh, I was wondering, do you have any kind of philosophy you could share with the ladies who are aspiring to be a driver or currently drivers? Obviously, you've got an attitude that's wonderful. It's like, don't give up, get her done. How do people do that when they think they can't? Well, I, I really can't answer that question because I never had that problem because I got her done. I mean, I would leave Knoxville, Tennessee in 36 hours. I'd be in L.A. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Well, it wasn't but like, what, 2,000 miles? Yeah. And I really didn't read, run that fast over the speed limit because 2,000 miles would be, what, 40 hours? No. I'd get out there in 36. And I know one time I was leased up here to a company, and they had a married team come in there that had a placard load on. Lisa, will you get this out there to Denver for us? And I said, when? As soon as you can. I said, okay. So we jerked the placards off his truck and put on mine, and I went in and made me some fake bills. And the first thing that happened to me when I got over going into Missouri to scales, Park your truck and bring your paperwork in. So I done that, and I went inside. Well, we couldn't read the size of your truck and, and the name of the truck or the name of the company. It had them pearlescent paint job on it. So one time you look at it, be one color. The time you look at it, be another color. And mm-hmm. they couldn't make out the name of the truck. But once I kind of like got out of the light, she could see, you know, who it was. But I got out there at 9 o'clock, around 1,000 miles. And I will say it's like 6 o'clock when I left out. But 9 o'clock, I called in, Miss Piggs. I said, I'm there. I'm in the hole. I'm going to bed. I'm tired. I heard her holler, all right, you can mm-hmm, pay up. They had made a bet that I wouldn't be there. Oh, jeez. Yeah, wow. so she made her a few bucks off of them. Pay up, sucker. She's there. But she uh-huh. knows me. She knows I have it there. Mm-hmm. Yes. I only stopped one time, and that was fuel and get a cup of coffee or well, a thermos jug full of coffee. And then just buzz on across through her, boy. So never be defeated. That, that sounds like something that uh, you basically lived by. Well, no, I had several trucks that could outrun my tail. Uh, that's only because we had 
you know, a bigger engine or a turned up engine or, or a different transmission or something. That could go faster than my truck, but other than that, nah, I was the front door. There you go. Everybody liked me at the front door. They were using me. I know what they were doing. Boop. Now you see me, now you don't. Well, I read that you had, uh, you'd uh, form a train, uh, 10 semis together, and then the guy in the lead would have the headlights, and everybody else shut theirs off and just went across the, what, the desert? Oh, yeah. On the nights where the moon is out so bright, and I mean, you could see without your headlights. So the head driver really had to be sharp because you had to watch for coyotes running across the road with some kind of strange animal. And we kept our distance apart from each other so that we could stop if we had to. Mm-hmm. And the tail truck always had its trailer lights on at the end of the pack hour. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we used to do that all the time. That was fun. <laughs> wow. That's like driving to the snow and putting your lights on bright. I mean, you just trip your tail off, boy. Look at that snow. So you got to put your lights back down on them where you don't go crazy. Those days had to have been just a ton of fun. Oh, they were. And we all yeah. knowed each other. And we all had upper and lower channels. I mean, I could be a, meet somebody in Dallas that was coming east and I was going west. And the next day I could talk to them and they'd be in Carolinas and I'd be in L.A. And we talked to each other on CB because we had the upper and lower channels with the booster. And my booster was so strong and so weedy there that I could pull up beside a car and holler, Hey, what are you doing down there? And man, you don't see them people look around. What the heck is that? <laughs> Feeding over their FM radio. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. My boys run in Seattle, Washington. Art, which Art's passed now, too. And we was leased to the same company. Right. And he said, I got to go. And this is on the west side of Salt Lake City. I said, well, we're going. No, I've got to go. I said, we're going as good as we can, buddy. No, I've got to go. That right turn signal come on to the shoulder he went. Of course, I went right behind. But he was kind of like pulled over a little bit in the grass where my headlights would go right down that yellow line. Mm -hmm. Well, he was out there doing the number two business. About that time, one of them desert bushes come across through there and hit him right up the box. That sucker must have run a half a mile with his britches down at his ankles. It's pretty bad. Oh, jeez. I laughed from that. Oh, gosh, did I laugh. I almost beat on myself. I was laughing so hard. That's funny. I said, what a crazy idiot. And then he had a grill ahead. Fast. And, of course, it was a full grill ahead. And he hollered, Lisa, let me know when the family comes up there. Okay. And whenever family would come up to her, somebody had some kids, he'd put that on. And, of course, you know, the, oh, look, look, look what's driving that truck. And by the time the, the parents would look, he'd have it off. And he'd be sitting there smiling, <laughs> just waving. The parents would put it back on. I That's mean, great. just anything to aggravate. Oh, sure. And it, it kept you awake and stopped the boredom, if there was any, you know? Oh, oh yeah. Although old yeah. Art, he was crazy. Anyway, he was more fun. We do the, I do the same thing up here. I mean, because it gets monotonous. We work long hours and long shifts. And um, I have a, my daughter bought a cone head so like so half the time i'll as i'm driving i'll pull up beside another piece of equipment and i'll whip on this cone head and i'll look down and i'll make a face and do the same thing or around christmas time yeah like or around christmas i'll i'll put on a rudolph nose that flashes and i'll have earrings that flash i'll have you know uh, antlers or a santa hat that flashes or i'll put christmas lights all around the truck or the grater or whatever piece of equipment i'm operating just to to put some cheer into people's lives again, you know, just sure. to, to make some smiles, right? So I, I get it. It's a lot right. of fun. Yeah, break the monotony. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Yo-Yo. This has been a real pleasure and an honor to talk to you. What we're going to do, too, is uh, put out the information on your fundraiser that your, your daughter started so that people can contribute because I think that that's real important. You've been a wonderful trailblazer and champion for women in the trucking industry. I think it's it's really awesome. Well, thank you very much for calling and doing the interview. I really appreciate it. And y'all have a blessed day and stay safe. You've inspired me, and I will be saying that from now on. Get her done. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Get her done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Yo-Yo. Thank you, sweetie. Y'all have a good one. All right, okay. you too. You've been listening to a great interview with a trucking legend, Myra Lisa Yo-Yo Worley, who's been a champion in the industry, especially for women. As we mentioned earlier, 
Yo-Yo's daughter, Michelle, has a fundraiser for her mom due to the serious health issues that took her off the road. She's had a lot of medical and other costs that aren't covered, and she could use some help. We would like to request everyone who can help to please go to Trucking with Yo-Yo to the End on Facebook and request to join the group. There you can reach out to her daughter, Michelle, to find out how you can help with basic items or monetary contributions. Everyone loves Yo-Yo, and we want to get the word out so as many people as possible can help. Again, it is Trucking with Yo-Yo to the End on Facebook. Yo-Yo also asked us to include some special thank yous for everyone who's helped her. She thanks God, her daughter Michelle, her sister Marion, Mac with the Boston Outlaw Truckers, Kim Grimm at 10-4 Magazine, Long Haul Paul, Tony Justice, Driver's Side, The Group Blackberry Smoke, Landline Magazine, Mr. Cook and his wife who set her a lift to help her out of bed, and everyone who's prayed for her and sent gifts like t-shirts, shampoo, and conditioner. Thank you for listening to this wonderful interview and a tribute to a trucking legend, Myra Lisa Yo-Yo Worley. It's been an honor, and we thank her for being on the show. You've been listening to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you want to be a guest on the show or have a topic or feedback, email us at info at tncradio.live. Thank you for listening to another great interview on tncradio.live and the Truckers Network Radio Show. All of the material you hear on tncradio.live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of tncradio.live and its partners. For inquiries, write us at info at tncradio.live.